we're living in interesting times. Our food supply is fragile. If the 1918 Spanish flu virus is anything to go by, it might come back with a vengeance in October. How are we going to survive? At the moment, we're sort of surviving, but we've got problems potentially coming up with difficulties with the harvest, with lack of people harvesting, and we've got to actually start doing things on a really local level. And if we do, then perhaps we're in with a chance. With the air, like I don't care, baby, by the way. Huh. Now we've got to be serious. Wherever you look, there might be places that you can grow things. Dave's going to show us how. Dave. So now we're going to have a little walk into the greenhouse and we'll have a look specifically at some of the practical things we've been doing to try and grow some food. Now, obviously this is a, a greenhouse and the percentage of people who are going to have a greenhouse to their disposal is practically zero. Um, however, you can find growing solutions that mimic a greenhouse and the conditions we've created here without too much difficulty. And uh, as we walk down here, we'll have a look at one of the first things we want to show you that you might consider doing, which is how to raise some very fast salad that you can eat within maybe three to four weeks. You might say, how could I possibly manage to produce something like this in my little apartment or my home environment? Probably you can't. But by watching what we've done here, maybe you can find a halfway solution, something smaller on a smaller scale, that involves the same principle. Now, if you look here, these, uh, these seedlings were sown just over two weeks ago. Already, you could eat these. They, they do have the potential to grow into a full-size salad plant. But at this moment here, you could start cutting some of them to make... A micro salad, which I'll tell you that. There you are. I'm eating a micro salad. Um, now, this whole setup here, believe it or not, was made with scrap material. Uh, the wooden base here, this was a, an old futon that had been thrown out and was lying down at the back of my house. Um, the soil, uh, we'll go through that in more detail shortly, but the soil is soil that we repurposed from other areas of the garden, which under normal circumstances wouldn't be up to growing standard, but some of the things we do to it will improve it to a level where you can grow things like this. Now the future for this salad is that some of it will be picked fairly soon to have as a salad. Other parts of it will be planted on, taken out and planted onto a box maybe like this, where we'll grow it to maybe half size. So it would be about like that size. And then you can start harvesting it as a, a semi-salad. So if you mix it with your micro salads, we'll plant some more seed. Micro salad, semi-salad. And then we'll have another series of boxes where we'll plant some of these things and grow them onto full maturity. So very quickly, within about six to eight weeks, we'll have a whole production line going where we'll be having salad available every day. Now, how you do that for yourself is down to your imagination. We can't give you every answer to every problem. What we can do is inspire you to start putting your imagination into gear because one of the things I've found over the years is that imaginative thinking is a habit. And it's like exercise. If you get out of the habit of being imaginative and creative, you stop being imaginative and creative. And if you start thinking laterally, outside the box, to use that phrase, about how can I use different materials in different ways, you will find it starts gamboling and you start looking everywhere for ideas about where you could grow things. For example, um, a great idea would be to take an old drawer from a cupboard or a set of uh, drawers, chest of drawers. You see these things lying around all over the place, um, which would create an environment similar to this. You need about four inches of soil depth to be uh, really well on the way. Seeds, interestingly enough, these seeds you're looking at now are a collection of old, out-of-date seeds. 
that I had from two years ago. So germination might be variable, but for something like this, it doesn't matter. If you look at this box over here, these are premier salad seeds, and you can buy these online from uh, stores like Thompson and Morgan, and they do salad mixes and things like that. Or you can make your own mix with different lettuce varieties, uh, beetroot, there's some beetroot seeds in there, there's some spinach seeds. Just a mix. Anything will do. Because uh, when you cut them when they're small, they all have a little bit of an individual taste, but you can use any kind of vegetable seed to eat at a, uh, when they're young. The only ones to avoid would probably be tomatoes, which uh, contain some pretty nasty uh, stuff in the leaves. One of your big challenges is going to be to create what I call a viable growing environment. Now, this is a premier five-star five, five growing environment. There's nothing here competing with these seeds. They have it all to themselves. They begin a really easy ride, which will really take care of them. If you see here, we have a great example where we've used some recycled old roof tiles that we found just over the back there. It allows us to raise the soil height, gives us more depth, but it protects this growing area from anything that's going on around here, whether it's slugs and snails trying to crawl around, or the soil falling out and coming all over the path. And in comparison, if you have a look behind over here, we have an area that is not Garde, where we have no real discernible barrier. And this area here, this strip, this six inches, basically is unusable. It's unusable, it gets dry, it washes away, and you are losing there valuable growing space. If you look at the perimeter of this area, you might be able to get 50 lettuces out of that extra six inches on the perimeter. So if you can create what I described earlier as viable growing spaces, you increase your chances of producing crops that are usable and you're going to be increasing the volume of food you can produce. This kind of awareness, this kind of thinking about how can I take it one step further to increase my chances, is part of the learning process, which some of you are probably just beginning. But at this stage, you're gathering points of information. When you put them all together and start interacting those points of information together, then you'll have knowledge, which is different to information. Dust and concrete like clay, that is due to a lack of organic matter. So, one of the things we have to address in creating a soil that's viable is the introduction of organic matter. And we're going to have a little adventure shortly, and where we go and look for free sources of organic matter that we can incorporate into this soil to bring it up to standard. Now, if we just have a look under here. Two days ago, I put some organic matter in a trench under here. So if you have a dig under here, if you look at the difference between that, that's full of organic matter which will provide nutrients, microbes and retain moisture compared to a handful of that. That's where we're going. That's our task. That's our goal, is to go from this to something like this. Then you've got a chance. If you're living in a city, you may well find an area somewhere like this on a verge or in a, an old flower bed in the front of your garden. These are the kind of spaces you're going to come up against. And quite honestly, if you just plant directly into this, you're not going to get very good results. It's worth your while to find these spaces and put a little investment in, in bringing some organic matter and turning them into growable spaces. About three weeks ago, we decided that we were going to probably need a good store of potatoes to see us over winter, but we had nowhere to grow them. So the first thing we did was we took off all the existing grass that you see around the edges. It was all the same. We took it off. Now, if you have a garden in your back of your house, 
where you have a law and you have two choices. You could theoretically simply dig, a, dig holes, put potatoes in there and they will grow. Here we decided to first of all remove the top four inches of turf simply because there is a pest that lives in, in the top four inches, wire worm, cop worms, which love to eat potatoes. You may have it in your garden, you may not. For us, we didn't want to take the chance. So we took off the top soil, rotivated to give us a fine tilth, and here we've got uh, our first two lines of early potatoes, which will take about 10 to 12 weeks and give us a nice uh, summer supply of new potatoes. In the next few weeks, we'll be planting our second earlies and main crop potatoes down here, which should give us a supply to store and carry over the winter. This is a project, if you really were serious about uh, producing some food to store for yourself and you can't buy it, have a look at your back garden. Maybe you have a lawn that you don't need.